Immaculate Conception Church in Old Town is a sweet little building constructed over a hundred years ago. There's a ton of history surrounding this church, what with Father Junipero Serra establishing the very first of California's missions in 1769, just up the hill at what is now Presidio Park. But let's talk about when this church first started, 99 years later. It was 1868, and a new priest, Father Ubach, felt it was time to replace the old crumbling adobe church with a longer-lasting brick building. The cornerstone was set in 1868, and the walls started going up, but very soon after, work stopped. It seemed the neighborhood wasn't the hot spot it once was, and parishioners were going to Newtown, San Diego. Mix into that a devastating fire in Old Town and a complete lack of funds? Well, Father Ubach turned his attention to building a church downtown, St. Joseph's Church, which some now consider San Diego's oldest Catholic church, but I digress. Well, fast forward to 1914, and people were returning to Old Town. Somebody decided it was time to start the church construction again. So they tore down the previously built brick walls, and they started it all over. The church was finished with a little financial help from La Jolla's Ellen Browning Scripps in 1917. Immaculate Conception Church has all the details of a classic mission revival style building with its curly-cued parapet front wall and domed top campanile, that's the bell tower, but the ornate columns at the entry make me think it's got some Spanish colonial revival thrown in. Whatever its style, it's a charming building with lots of history in a central location where you can find a comfy spot to sit and sketch. The goal behind Kid Sketch is to get you observing your world, witnessing it, and recording what you see. Sketches are much faster than trying to write down in words to describe a scene. And the fastest sketches of all are thumbnail sketches. Those are very small and almost scribbly. Thumbnail sketches are good warm-up exercises, too. And if something happens that prevents you from continuing on to a larger sketch, the thumbnail is there documenting the experience. Well, let's do some thumbnails of these small sketches of the church. So keep it small, blocking out the outside, and then work in. I see a square with curly cues and a rectangle next to it. And that rectangle is actually broken down into some smaller pieces, a little dome on top. There's something in the middle that's darker, some columns, this little thing, something above it, some steps, darken in any little window openings. That's about it. I have my thumbnail. I could quickly stick in a palm tree. Let's do another one, this time starting with ink. I still would, would see this little box with the curly cues on top. Maybe I see the stairs next. See how it's a little skinny there? doesn't matter. This is a, a thumbnail sketch. I'm just getting the gist of it. And in doing it quickly, I may learn some things about the building that when I take a little more time to, to sketch might, might help with the overall palm tree. Maybe in a thumbnail, I want to really study the top of that, that scribed parapet. I might just get sort of specific about what is it exactly I'm looking at. There's a thumbnail. And maybe that's all I wanted to document. I 
you get the idea? I encourage you to try thumbnail sketches wherever you are. Thumbnail sketches are also useful if you're trying to compose a sketch. For example, let's say we start with, we want to do a little sketch like that, and we're trying to decide, well, how big shall we make our, our little church? What if you want to make it a small little sketch? And you want to emphasize, maybe you want to emphasize the sky, or just how small and insignificant it might be. Maybe it's a, it's a particularly cloudy day and there's something of interest that you want in the sky. Maybe you want to emphasize what the clouds are this particular, <laughs> this particular day. Um, if you were emphasizing it, you'd be emphasizing the blue. But but that could be something that you experiment as well with your with your thumbnail. What if it is all about the blue, and you want a tiny little building with a whole bunch of other stuff? There's a there's a thumbnail. Another might be what if in your composition you want to do a quick study of. Uh, maybe an asymmetrical drawing, especially since the building is so symmetrical. So you block out your church or your subject, putting in just enough detail to help you with your thumbnail. And maybe it's, maybe the tree would be in bloom and so it was more about the tree. And you'd have to go there later. I took this picture in uh, late December, early January. And they're deciduous trees, so the, the leaves are off. And there's a fun little thumbnail. You can get some emphasis on where your tonal values are. And in this case, if that tree does have a lot of leaves on it, it'd probably be casting an interesting shadow. So that's another fun little thumbnail. So now that we are somewhat familiar with our subject, the church, we can start again and pay closer attention to the proportions and details. We, we look for overall shapes, block them out, and then move in with more with more of the details. So, so it's a concept where you start outside and move in. So we'll start with the outside of this, get our, our vertical tower there, and then move in. It seems that there is a square form in the front of the facade of the church. And if I were using my pencil as a measuring device, the point on the far right side my thumb here at the other edge of the facade, not engaging the campanile. It measures about like that. If I turn it this way, measuring from the bottom of the stairs, which is sort of the bottom of that, it's about square. It's actually pretty much square if I don't count the step. So let's go to our sheet somewhere in the middle. Block out a square. You'll notice that I'm not choking up on my pencil. I'm holding it back just a little. Using the, the same sort of principle, let's block out the rectangle here. I'm going to suggest we kind of eyeball it. It's narrower than half. If you could just visualize that's about half, or if you want to Put your tick mark out there. We know it's not there. Come in just a little. If that's the top of our building, the tower's a little taller than, oh, just a little bit taller. There's our beginning. 
at some point we're going to add some detail. The first thing I would probably try to do is, um, let's see if we can't figure out some way to, to guide us to do this fun little shape. You, you could look at it, you could start eyeballing it. With practice, that's what I'd probably do. But let's try something else. Let's take our pencil and approximate that angle. Let's find what that angle's like. We're using that angle as a guide. The curved forms go up to that line, but they don't cross the line. On the low side, we have a small circular form. In the middle, we have the, the, the center half round. And in between the low and the high half round, is sort of a stretched out half round. If you'll if you break it apart, you'll see there's it's half of a circle. So if that's easier for you, draw a little circle up there. Slice it in half. It's got little ears or shoulders. It dips. These look like they come straight off, so if you drew a little line at your halfway point, that'll help you locate the height of your, your middle circular forms. And then connect all the circles together. Can you see that? We jumped in and did the hardest part first. You can erase a few things if you'd like. I think we should continue on with the hard parts, if you will. Let's sketch this very ornate entry with the columns. Columns are actually freestanding. These are half columns and are embedded into the wall. Take the steps and put them in first. And then let's identify what we have here. Blocking it out, what are some comparisons we could make? Half the width of the church is about the width of the columns. So that would mean if you divide that right side in half there, and if you divide the, right, the left side in half about there, that should be about should be about the width. So there's my half. Okay. I don't know about how you're drawing yours. I'm not I'm not making my sketch the exact size of the photo I'm looking at. I'm making it in proportion. That is, this square has the same proportions as my square, but they're not the same size. So the colonnade, the proportions of these columns to that big square, my columns have the same proportion to my square. All right, let's find, if we compare the width to the height, what are we getting? The width of the columns is about the height, is equal to the height up to, up to the top of those urns. So one good way of finding a square, we know the width is eyeball it, or if you can Try to draw some, try to draw an X in there. That'll help. So, so if you've got your X, remember that that this line is representing the top of the urns. So if we want to get this pediment, this eyebrow part, come down a little. Here we go. It's got a bump in the middle.
So let's walk out four columns there. They're not equally spaced. There's a bigger space in the middle. So put first column at the far left, this column at the far right. Come in a little, come in a little. This looks like it's about, about the halfway point. So now we can put our door in. Put a little arch top on it. How much other detail do we want to do? Of course we need the urns. It's sitting right on top of that column. And this boxy urn, which actually it's not an urn, just looks like it's an extension of the column. This eyebrow has got some thickness to it. We don't need to be exact. Of course, we're, we're drawing a tiny little sketch. It's not going to be exact at all. Okay, so we have those, and that'll help us with this arched top. That'll help us with the proportions of it. We're not near. We're not near the top yet, and that's good. So it's a round top, straight sides. A little cross up there. There's some detail we can get into, or you can. Well, you can decide how much detail you want to put on that, and you can decide if if we go into ink, how much you want. For the campanile, let's, can you see that it starts to step back? Yes, a lot of these trees are in the way, but it steps back. There's a big rectangle at the bottom, and then it steps up. It's sort of got a square on it, another square, another square. That first rectangle is about, the height of it is about equal to the top of what I'm calling that eyebrow. We, we hardly see the line between them, and we'll probably erase that after a bit. And then the next one, come in a little. The top of it is just below that point. And that, that might help us to see where, you know, it sort of checks our proportions. And you can start to adjust a little if you don't like your proportions. This one looks like it's in alignment there. And then the very top box, well, we haven't drawn our cross on there yet. But it looks like it's about the same height as these other ones, maybe a little, a little less tall. At some point, we'll go back in and draw in these arch tops, openings. This little guy. Compare its location to what you've already sketched. If anything, I'd say I've got my tower too wide and it's throwing everything off. But I'm still working in pencil and I can adjust. I think that helps.
you can see a little bit of the side of that tower. It comes off of the top, this upper corner. You're going to come off there. You're going to lay your pencil. It looks like if I were to draw a line from the door right here, that's just where my eye goes. So take your pencil, lay it across there. See where that line's going to go? The other tricky thing is the back side of that tower, it's just a tiny bit away. Look at this line. It goes back to almost that far. doesn't look so good. I've got it too flat. It needs to start here at this point at the door. All right, the top of this is a half round. That dome is like a half of a ball. When they built it, they built it in segments. We can, we can draw, we can sketch our half round like that. It's got a cross on it. Okay, what else before we start inking? I think it'd be nice to get the planters in the front. So we've, we've got these steps that we've already blocked out. There's more steps in front and then there's these planters and we can see a little bit of the rocks in the planter area. The distance from the bottom of the building to the top of that wall is about the same as is what we've blocked out for those steps. So if you can give yourself another little line just below it. The planter is down here. Any other adjustments you'd like to make? Maybe I'd like to make that a little rounder. At the top of each of these little boxes is a little bit of molding. It's got a little shape to it. All right, it be, there's other things if we want. We can just finish it uh, like this, or you could make, give some sort of hint of other things that are going on over here, I think. A little sign here. It depends on how much you want to capture of your experience there. Does it add to it? You want to add the palm tree?
I'm not going to add these trees. I think that would be a bit much. Ready to start with the with our pen. I like a rolling ball, extra fine. You can use whatever thickness you'd like. I'm going to re retrace our steps. We start with we start with a pen that has ink in it. Start with that half circle up top and our sort of curly cues. Since my first two pens seem to be lacking in ink, I'm questioning whether it's the pen or whether I've got too much pencil on the sheet. So I'm gonna take an eraser and just lightly remove some of my pencil markings. If you have a kneaded eraser, that'll be a good thing to use. Just lightly erase a few of those lines, just so that your pen can make contact with the paper. Now I will try for a third time. Started with the half round in the middle and then chased around down the sides. Um, this line, I could have left it off because we don't really see it, do we? I stopped when I remembered it. And then the tower. I'm adding a couple extra lines for the little molding. The sun is catching them and we're seeing the shadow. A little guy up on top, and then the sides that you see sort of in perspective. And how about all that ornate work by the entry door? I'm just putting in the steps. So there's more to these columns than just the straight lines we, we sketched out or blocked out. See how they're sitting on bases part way up. So give them some bases. Making quick lines here is a nice idea because there's a lot of detail in there, but making quicker lines um, suggests that you're not trying to get all of the details in, but you're just trying to give a hint. Then up near the top, give it another uh, break, break off sort of a capital there. lightly doing the sides. If you're interested, there are little oh, cool little swirly things, some swirly texture in your columns if you want to throw that in. But you'll want to do those with a fast pin so that again it doesn't become too important. They're just little hints at details. And finish at the capitals of the columns. We have this eyebrow, the little subtle bump in the middle. It's got a thickness that mirrors the bottom. It's a little wider at the top. Got your urns. Try to keep them small. Not so much an urn there, those are sort of boxy, so the urns are just above your outer two columns. I 
How about the door opening? We didn't block it out in when we were using the pencil, but in addition to that round top there, there's there's more stonework around it. And a few other details that you could just lightly drop in. What's next? Take a look at your columns, see if you want to add any other lines to them. We'll come back in and add some shadow, but for now we're working on the lines and shapes and some of the details before we get into tonal values, before we get into the lightest lights and the darkest darks. I think the next thing would be the openings for the bells. And that cutest ever little window there. You can see just inside the bell openings on the left hand side of each of those openings, but you can't see on the right. So if you wanted to go back in and add a second line just on the left hand side of each of those openings, but not on the right, that shows a little bit of the wall thickness. Now we can finish those steps. And the concrete steps. And our little planter walls down at the bottom. A lot of times I like to outline our sketch and Partially the reason is so I can tell myself when it's okay to stop sketching. Because I don't need to add anything else in there. I'm doing that in this case too. I went ahead and did the sidewalk. All right, how about the tree? There's a shrub. I see a shrub here. And then the palm tree starts about level with the base of the building. And then some palm fronds, which we can keep as simple or as busy as you like. I'm just mimicking the direction they go in. You can add a little tonal value in between, see in between the palm fronds. It's a little darker. Now I'd like to erase more of the lines, our pencil lines. Because I'd like to add some tonal value, the shade and shadow. Oh, I don't know the difference between shade and shadow, because it's the same. But I want to take the pencil lines off so I can actually take a look and see where do we need to darken it up. The pencil lines were adding a little bit of character. And so now that we've got it just with ink, we'll see where where do we need where do we need some attention? Certainly, I think we want to darken in. We want to create that shadow with the door opening. Begin to make diagonal lines for my my shadowing. I will also. Pick a side and make one side a little darker than the other. There's a little shadow on the glass. There's definitely some shadow here underneath this eyebrow. It's There's very little on the columns themselves. There's a lot more shadow on the wall. 
your shadows will uh, mimic what the arch is doing, what that line is doing. A little shadow there. And then you can add a little bit of shadow at the top of the columns. Then the openings where the bells are. You can see the bell here and that second bell there. We hadn't sketched them in, but go ahead and, and sketch them. And then, um, because there's not much detail that you can see in there, I'd recommend not putting any, any tonal value on them, even though they're dark. This way they can, they can stand out a bit. Our sketch needs a little something. Yes, it could be the blue, but I feel like there's an awful lot that in the that's in the background, and I I don't want don't want to get into the detail of it. But what I was thinking we could do is just do some cross hatching that says yes, there's stuff back there, and we don't really care what it is, but we're going to. We're going to shade it in or give it some, some cross hatching to give our little church a little more punch as a drawing, make it stand out. So we're sort of silhouetting the, the little building. So just with a series of cross hatches. Of course, if you had the patience and you wanted to block out details, you could. But I think that it, if we were to actually document what's back there, it takes away from the sweet little character of the church itself. So we're just going to put everything in the shadows. Maybe make a little darker as if there were a layer of um, plantings there. And there is actually planting here. Sometimes we like to draw sky in our, in our sketches. Just a series of lines like that. Get some birds here near the near the bay, near the ocean. I'm gonna leave it at this. Then just check on your check on your work and see is there any place else that could use a little a little detail. you wanted to put in the handrails, you could. Now's a good time to erase any stray pencil marks you might have. I see when I'm erasing this up here, I actually erased that tiny little cross at the top of the blue dome. Let's add color to the sky now. It's a pretty dark a beautiful sky. It was a such a sunny day, and um, that blue of the sky really silhouetted. Talk about silhouetting! 
the silhouette of the, the church and the creamy whiteness of that, that building so, so nicely. Actually, the sky was seemed to be part of the composition. You can sketch your lines in any direction, but I do like to make them in one direction, either horizontal or vertical or diagonal. This is the one thing about how blue the sky was is that dome just washed, got washed away. Otherwise, you could have. You could have just, if you're, if you don't have the patience, you could add just the blue to the dome itself and leave the sky. I know a lot of um, urban sketchers that will will sketch when they're there on site, and then they'll save the color for later on in the day. Some urban sketchers will travel with watercolors and they can do some watercoloring, which makes this, this, this laborious part where we're taking some time to put the blue in. People who use watercolor, they can put a wash, a blue sky in quickly. They also may wait until they get home, or if they're traveling back to the hotel, wait until the end of the day when watercolors are not so difficult to use when you're on site. So two reasons to wait to color later. One is if you run out of time, you can add your color later. The other one is if you're using watercolors, it might be kind of messy. I had been thinking about it, I might have outlined that cross and um, left it white. Because it really stands out against that blue sky. I might add a little more detail around the trunk of the palm tree to show that it turns a little and that it's a rough surface. I add more lines to the shadow side of the tree. Our light source is coming. Well, it's pretty much overhead, but it's also a little bit off to the left. So if your sun, if your light source is on the left, your shadows are always on the right. And for that matter, we can add a little shadow over here outside of that tower that we can see. Um, we see it sloping back like that. I'm adding a little more tonal value, a little, a few more shadows where the door openings are and where the bell openings are. Now, as we usually do, I encourage you to write where you were and the name of the building and the date. So when you come back to your sketchbook weeks, months, years later, you'll remember where you were. Immaculate Conception Church. Old Town. San Diego. February. 2022.